Kiwi's No Breakfast, only on Kiwi. It's yes, well, a little bit earlier on this morning with uh, Jean Casnado, our youth affairs correspondent. We were talking about the Undy 500 chaos in Dunedin. We're trying not to call it a, a riot because, well, a riot insinuates something else, completely, completely something with a purpose, perhaps, uh, fighting for, for something. But anyway, 80 people were arrested in Dunedin over the weekend uh, when the race descended in uh, Dunedin City. And uh, we've just had a call from Steve Guinness, who was a, um, an organiser in previous years. Steve, good morning. Yeah, good day, Wemo. How's it going? Very, very well. Now, um, when were you an organiser of the Under 500? Um, I was on the organising committee in uh, 2004 and 2005. And and so you're the you're part of the Canterbury side of things. Yeah, I was um, on the Insock committee in both those years. Now, from from what I remember back in those years, the Students Association didn't uh, they didn't have any part in in the Under 500. It was just uh, it was just the Engineering Association that that actually did or society. You mean uh, Otago Students Association? Well, no, or, on, on the Canterbury one, or at least in previous years, uh, the Canterbury Students Association had shied away from organising. Yeah, no, it's 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 run by the um, NSOC, which is the Engineering Society right. um, at Canterbury. So okay. It, so it always has been. It's been going since um, 1987. Okay. So it's, it's been, been a tradition since then, but um, it's, only, it's only really been since about 2006 was the first year that um, the partying started to get a bit out of control, and then 2007 was the year that the so-called riots um, occurred. But there had always been issues down through the years, hadn't there, with uh, at least some kind of disruption in Dunedin or, or along the road on the way there? Yeah, but um, it's sort of no more issues than... I mean, Scarfies always set couches on fire. That's, that's been... That, that, they've always done that. No. Um, and it, 2005 and before that, we're all um, reasonably controlled. There's, there's always been a few arrests, but you're always going to get a few arrests on a, on a Saturday night. OK, so but what, why has it got so bad? Um, yeah, so the, I, I agreed with um, your last guy who was on in regards to the fact that a riots, you know, riots are fueled from different things. The, the European sporting teams have riots when someone loses and, and there's riots over politics, that sort of thing. So basically, um, I see it as there's two things which fuel these riots, um, and they sh- as, it, as I said, they shouldn't be called riots, but here's why they're fueled. So the first one is that uh, Otago Uni students, they, they try and one-up the previous year's partying, um, and they also try and... Um, there's a culture within Otago Uni students that mm. they, they sort of show off to the Canterbury students that they are bigger partiers, is this the first year students or second year students or who are they? It's it's the it's the earlier early year students, so it is probably the first and second year students. So who, these so these students were at high school last year and they would have seen these uh you know these these so called riots on the exactly TV. Exactly that, and I mean there's been increased media with um so obviously the riots and there's other other student sort of shows which show how fun uni is and how much partying there is involved. So mm. these these guys are literally trying to show off that they are bigger partiers than um, previous years and then then the Canterbury students because right. there's always been a bit of a rivalry between Canterbury and Otago that, you know, who's who's the biggest partier? Okay, so well, if, if that's the case then, why not shut it down? Well, the second thing was, so that's the first reason, but Obviously, there's no. That, that's not really a reason to riot. That's just a reason to party. Yeah. So the second reason is that um, it's to do with the police. I th- I think they strategize about this for months mm. in regards to how they're going to handle these riots. Um, so they come into this and in their heads. They're already going to riot. They, they've already said that. Hey, look, the, the students are going to get out of control. We are going to riot. So. You know that that's going to happen, right? And that those are the two reasons why there's riots created. So they go in there, uh, the police go in there with the purpose of um, sorting out uh, a major disruption in the streets. It, exactly, they, it's already in. But that, already, but that disruption is there though when they when they get there. No, but they've already strategized about this for months in advance, leading up to mm. it. Going, yep, well, there's going to be some. There's going to be completely out of control. So we are going to bring in extra police from everywhere. We're going to we're going to strategize with our riot team, and we're actually going to come in in full force and shut these guys down. So those are the two reasons the riots are that that that's why they're fueled. Mm. But I don't I don't think those things we shouldn't be thinking about those points. We should be thinking about um, how the undie will continue because 
Does it need to continue? Well, there's a few reasons um, why it will it will continue, and one is, I mean, obviously you can't stop um, people driving between Christchurch and Dunedin, and obviously students are or, well the the this, the group of students who like to party, they're always going to party. Yeah. So the the positives within the undie is that you know it, it's actually not just a piss trip. There's uh, there's hours and hours. There's thousands of hours spent leading up to the undie with your, your with your mates um, coming up with th- your theme. Yeah, and and I've seen some of those vehicles in the past, and there you know there's a lot of lot of work and a lot of talent that goes into them. Yeah. 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 So you're literally getting you know ten ten guys and girls um, at the flat for you know, four or five weekends leading up and a few late nights um, in between lectures actually working full-on. People have lights set up in the streets to, you know, to work on their vans at night. Yeah. The the highest people are hiring bloody chainsaws or whatever to chop pieces of wood and, you know, th- there's a lot of effort that goes into that. Oh, okay, okay. So so let's say that, that that's a good thing. That's a good part of it. Yeah. What, what, why go to Dunedin where, where there is going to be this kind of one-upmanship going on? Well, why not well, go go out in the middle of nowhere? Well, let's focus away from that one-upmanship, right? So the, there's a there's a few more positives within the event of, uh, you know, including there's a, there's some sponsors which get a few things out of it. The the undies actually gives back to the community as a charitable thing, mm. and the undie puts in risk mitigation um, to to stop as much as they can. So in in comparison to 2007, there was um, less Canterbury students arrested. And, and that was due to um, Insoc saying that, hey, look, you're going to be banned from the end of lectures party, um, and, and that's quite a big thing for most, you know, these, yeah. these people who love to party. And so, if you if you have a few more of those things, so Otago has some of them, and Canterbury has some. So the Otago students, for example, well, surely, hang on, surely being being arrested and locked up, and the, and then and the rest of your university career uh, in jeopardy. Surely that's enough. Well, I mean, if if that's if that's what they choose, to well, that's what they are doing. Those these kids are going in court today. Yeah. So if they if they lose their um, you know, if if they're kicked out of uni, then so be it. But these these things moving forward, these things need to be set. The press needs to actually say, hey, look, these are the conditions. If students are arrested for you know these reasons, then they they're going to get. If kicked out of uni is an option, then so be it. Are but you saying you saying that these students weren't told this by anyone beforehand? Well, I, I'm saying let's move ahead here. I'm not. Let's not concentrate on this undie that's just happened. Let's concentrate on the future because it's going to happen. So let, let's say, okay, you're either if, if you're done for writing, you're kicked out of uni. If you're done for you know pissing on a fence or or having a having a bottle of beer in a in a zone, you still get arrested. But okay. then you get kicked out of you get an eighteen month ban from Guardies, the Cook or the Foundry, the local pubs, mm. things like that will stop um student they, it'll make these students think twice. So real real fear needs to be there. Yeah, it okay. well, it's, it's not it's not fear as such. It's more just, hey, these are the these are the consequences and to be honest, they're not that's not hard to set up. An eighteen month ban from a local pub is is a piece of piss to, to, to set up. So that that's that's to that's to stop that's to help stop the riots, and then the, the main thing is have an event, and that has been said. Um, yeah. I just read an article in the ODT this morning. Um, a guy, I think it's Edgar Centre or something, holds about two or three thousand people. Um, or you could take the student union, um, the place where they have events, or you could take even the town hall yeah. or something. Isn't it funny though that, that an event is required now? But in the past, the event was to go and interact with the Otago students and, and go and hang out in, in their flats, you know, and do the Scarfies thing for a weekend. That was the event. Why? What? What? Why did? The, why does the new generation need something new? Um, well, it, it's just based on the fact that the, as I mentioned um, at the start, that the student culture has has got um, and turned into a bit of a one-upmanship. Mm. Um, and if you look at if you look at frat houses over in America that that's how they work is they try and one up some someone else and and things end up getting out of control so um, we're we blaming the Americans no no I'm just saying you can look at that as a, a piece of, of uh, an example in 
that happens in history, you know, that happens in cultures. Mm. Just an example. Okay. Hey, Steve, thanks so much for your time and, and cheers for giving us a call and, and shedding some more light on this for us. Yeah, no really, problem. Really appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Uh, Steve Gilmore, who, uh, or Guinness, sorry, uh, who was um, a, uh, an organiser of the Andy 500 in uh, previous years. Here's Liam Finn, Eliza Jane, and Connor Moccasin.